again. Thank you very much for joining us today. We will start at around two o'clock Eastern time. And today we are going to be talking about engaging your patrons with the Koha OPAC. So really fantastic. We'll be focusing all on the OPAC and um, we hope that you are going to have a great time today. Any webinar with, at least with Bywater, um, we have a, a chat box and a, um, a Q and A box that you can ask questions for during the time. And looks like I got Jesse right in time and she'll, she'll be able to monitor the questions. So please feel free to ask questions as we go along. And um, also to, this will be recorded and we can send it out to anybody you wanna share it with, or if you know your colleague wasn't able to make it or however you wanna share with that, we'll send that out to everybody. Some some folks I know from previous training. So hello, thank you all for joining us today. This is gonna to be fantastic to, to look at the OPAC today and see um, what we have uh, the ability to show, not show, and all the fun things that we can do with the Koha OPAC. <laughs> yeah, hi, Sonia. <laughs> Um, Sonia rem reminds me of something. If you do decide to use the chat box, it defaults to panelists. So if you want to put a question out there, I think everyone would love to know your questions. So just adjust that a bit to be all panelists and attendees. So then we have everybody on the same page when you ask a question, which is really helpful. It's just a little bit after two o'clock, so I have no problem um, giving this a shot and starting us up today. And again, thank you very much. This is um, a fabulous time that we're going to spend about 30 minutes talking about the Koha OPAC and how we can engage our patrons with this. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen again with a different look. So this may not look like your Koha OPAC or a Koha OPAC you've ever seen. This is definitely a very customized style of OPAC. And a little bit later on today, we're going to just go ahead and pop over to a few other OPACs so we can look at different versions of how our partners around the country have used their OPAC, whether they're an academic library, a specialized library. And that's what I love to show anybody looking at Koha moving forward is to see how customized it actually is. We can start off with our the colors and the kind of feel of our OPAC. We have a little bit of a logo at the bottom. We've got some great colors that we're able to assign. And this is all done through the staff client. So you don't need to know specialized HTML to be able to assign colors and, um, and logos. So that's really fantastic. We've actually taken the opportunity to put a lot of information on this front page, such, such as how we can co be contacted. So our phone number, our email address. So that's really prominent on our webpage. You can see we have it at the top and we also have it at the bottom and we have it at the middle. So we want people to contact us. So another way to engage patrons to let us know that we're, we're open to have any questions. This center box is a really key area within Koha. We're able to highlight the search area, whether that is a catalog search, or we also have an EBSCO discovery layer built into our Koha OPAC that our users could go ahead and search that discovery layer. We're utilizing also the center area for our hours. So we wanna let patrons know what time we're open and closed and make it really easy for them to be able to get that information. Over here on the right, we're integrating a lot of our social media options. So with other ways to get our patrons to find out more about our, our library. So it's a really great way to use this, this, um, this top bar. On the left-hand side of our Koha OPAC, we have links. So we have links to our website, tutorial videos, Koha community areas. And you could, I've seen these links to town websites or um, database or different resources that your patron can use. So really integrating, almost making your Koha OPAC that 
website or that landing page for your patrons is really helpful. And that means that your, your user doesn't have to remember where they saw the information. They can have just one place, search the catalog, and also get more information about maybe your events or your calendar or your meeting room. So all these are viable options to have links on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. This center area is a very popular area, which I love to see that visualization of new books within the collection. So we're highlighting new, but we also have three different carousels going on. We have a fiction. So we're kind of putting out to our library users, hey, this is what's new in our fiction section. This is what's new in our nonfiction section. And then we have staff picks. These can either be done via a report. So Koha can go ahead and look at when you brought them into the catalog using that data session, or you can curate lists such as staff picks. So your librarians can go ahead and create a list that can be pushed out into the OPAC, whether there's a theme of the month or something going on in your community that you want to highlight the part of the collection that you have driven towards that. Maybe in spring, you got a lot of gardening books or fall, you got harvesting books. Um, in the winter, we want to look at sewing and projects and things like that. So this is a great way to kind of mix up what your user can see and be interested in. They may not even think that they wanted a gardening book until they saw it on this cover flow. So that's fantastic. I am logged into the Koha OPAC. So a user, if they're logged in, will get a nice OPAC summary right on the right hand side that gives me a quick look at number of checkouts if I have something overdue, and then any holds that I have in the library system, which I really like that nice snapshot of um, what's going on with my account. A user does not need to be logged in to search the catalog. Um, if they are logged in, they can go ahead and create lists. They could place things on hold, but without being logged in, you have lots of um, alternative options as well. Finally, at the bottom area, we have more information that we can display to our users, such as our address and our logo. But again, all of these areas, and we'll look at other OPACs in a few minutes, can use these different areas to customize and really identify with your patrons. So we're gonna go ahead and type in that gardening um, catalog search. And this is just your Google search. What I love about the, um, the Koha catalog, they're going to give me results both in the physical collection and also OverDrive or um, ebook e content. I'm trying to recorded books. What is that the one that's gone? 3M Cloud Library. There you go. To integrate and have an inline search option. So I can see my library has 459 things and I also can search the OverDrive collection. So I'm not leaving the Koha OPAC, I'm able to see those results right within the Koha OPAC, which I really like. Once I'm logged in to my OverDrive account, I can also check things out, check things in and renew. So really a one-stop shop, which I really appreciate. Where I have a lot of results, I have this refining option on the left, which would allow me to really look at what I'm hone in on what I'm looking for here. I can say, well, I'm headed to the library. I only wanna see things that are currently available. Or I could go ahead and look at some other criteria such as audiobooks. I'm a huge audiobook fan. Maybe a series or a topics series. Maybe I should choose four dummies. So let's go for the four dummies option, um, gardening. I refined my search and I only have one option, which I really appreciate, one-stop shop. This is great. I'm on the full result and I'm able to see a lot more information about this book and say, hey, this probably is up my alley. For example, it's for, for dummies, so we're good to go. As I scroll down a, a wee bit, I can see the holdings. I can see what location is at. So if I'm in a multi-branch library system, I can see what library it's at and also if, if it's available. Great feature here, browse shelf. So with everything going on in the world, sometimes libraries aren't open. This browse shelf feature has actually probably more, been more utilized in the past, where I'm actually putting on my 
virtual reality glasses and I'm able to see everything in that same area of my library. So I may find books that I would have found or I would have had to weed through a lot of those results to maybe hone in on what I'm looking for. Or something may just catch my eye and say, hey, this actually sounds really good or my friend recommended it. So it's leading me down to other books I may have not found, which I really appreciate because sometimes I'm kind of going in it about blindly. So again, once I click that title in the My Browse shelf, I'm able to see that same information I saw in my dummies book. One thing, a couple of things I wanna point out over here on the right is one of my favorite, it's send to a device. So your user has the ability with their phone to take a picture of the QR code that's listed on this result page and they're able to store it on their phone. So I could just click this picture and now the link is on my phone and I can send it to my friend or my myself to remember the next time I'm at the library. So it's easy to be able to capture that information. I probably skipped over this, but of course, Koa is a mobile responsive. It's a web browser. So I could get this on my laptop, my iPad, my cell phone as it is. So making it very accessible to all the public if they're able to access the internet. You can see that this is already in my cart, but if I'm logged in, I can go ahead and start creating a list of gardening books for next spring, or, and this is just personal to myself. Once I'm logged in, I have access to any books in my lists. Let's go ahead and create a, I'm gonna create a list. Gardening. And save. So it's a private list by default, which means that I only have access to it, which means that no one else can see that my, I'm getting my dummy gardening for dummies. Okay. At the very top, we, we bypass this really quickly because I wanted some options in there. We always have a cart and a list option to your users. Cart is really fantastic for users that never remember their library card number, but want to be able to store something temporarily as they're doing their browsing. So I'm browsing, I just wanna write some titles down and then have them when they go in or just kind of weed through what I'm choosing. So my cart option can be here temporarily. And then I'm able to go ahead and um, place that on hold or add to a list from the cart feature. I really like that. And then I also have um, my list feature, which I guess is, it must be missing in here. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna pop over to my other list because through my account summary, I can also access my lists and the librarian's lists, which I really like. Once I'm in my account summary, I can see any list that I've created. So there's the one I created today for gardening. And then any list that the staff have created, I have access to. So those ones that we saw on the cover flow, I'm able to go ahead and look at those really easily and go ahead and say, oh, I wanna place that on hold before her next book comes out. Go ahead and read that. Before we head back over to the patron summary, I want to jump into the advanced search option. I can say that this is kind of my love where if I know exactly what I'm looking for, this gives the patron the power to be able to easily do a search and hone in instead of getting that big group of um, options. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that advanced search before we go, though you can see that that never left my top section. So my searching options are always there wherever I am in the Koha catalog. So we don't have to toggle back and find out where I was. So if I was searching for one of my children's projects and I wanted to, they're doing a project, hey mom, I need a book really fast or a couple of books because I got to do this project by tomorrow about Japan. I could easily come in here, add the subject, and then I can narrow my results really easily. Because if I pick Japan, I'm going to get adult books, fiction books, nonfiction books. I'm going to get a plethora of things that will not be useful to my child. So if I go to my shelving location and, and say, well, I'm looking for a juvenile book in the subject of Japan. And then I also want something in the nonfiction range that they're able to um, write that research paper on it. Before I hit search, I'm gonna just show you there are other options here in the advanced search. 
I could look at a date range. I really like a date range. If I'm looking for a topic that I know has evolved a lot, maybe computer science or um, politics, I want only current books in this subject. So you're able to give a range or say just 2020 and above, which is really nice. We also have that ability to add, to look for things that are just available right now, which I, I appreciate. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that search. I'm looking just for Japan books, just for nonfiction and just for my juvenile. So it shows me that I have five results. I still have the facets on the left if I wanted to narrow that down to maybe the holding library or a type of book if I had a variety, or I could easily say, oh yeah, Hiroshima sounds like a great idea. Let's go ahead and place it on hold. Go ahead and confirm hold. I'm not doing um, much else than just hitting that place a hold button because I'm pretty sure that that's probably an easy book that they can um, dissect. If I wanted to learn more about maybe the book before I place a hold, I could see that brief, that full record again, and then place a hold here. From this page, I'm gonna to toggle over to my account, which I already did before. So you've seen me do it before, but I have that static bar at the top, easy access to my account. Once I place hold, maybe I wanna make sure that book is on hold. I can come over to my account and also see other things that I have available in my, um, in my library world. All my checkouts are listed here. Users could go ahead and renew from the OPAC. So if I click renew and renew selected, that means that I don't need to pop into the library or give the library a call. I can do it right from um, the OPAC. This is, this is something that I really love that you can, um, you can rate items in your catalog if your library allows. And this is a new, newer feature where you could always rate books by stars when you are browsing, but this new feature to say, hey, I'm gonna rate this book in my checkouts because I've read it and now I want to be able to say, yep, it's a five-star book and pass it back to the library. So you can go ahead and star that book right from here. Under my holds tab, easy, easy, easy. If I need to cancel a hold, suspend a hold, maybe I'm going on vacation. Ooh, what's that, a vacation? Like maybe leaving the state and everything. I can go ahead and say, hey, I'd like to suspend that hold until I come back. So I can suspend, I can resume, um, and I can also cancel any holds right from this um, page. Some options on the over on the left, if libraries um, are using some sort of curbside pickup, we have that option right through the OPAC for, for users to be able to schedule a pickup or see any current scheduled pickups within their system. So I can go ahead and if my library is doing that, pick the branch and the time and make any notes. Maybe I'm driving in on a bike and let the library know when I'm coming. Change your password can be done when you're logged in. Koha also gives you the option to, I forgot my password. So if you didn't, weren't able to log in, you could go ahead and send a helpful email right to your inbox to say, hey, let me get back into my Koha account. Purchase suggestions, one of my faves, a great seamless way for libraries to maintain and help curate their collection by their community members. So placing purchase suggestions and allowing your users to say, hey, I just heard about this on NPR or read about it in the paper or a local author has written a book. This is a great way to have your users interact with um, librarians and make helpful suggestions. pop over to messaging and then we're gonna, I have a few more things to show you, which I'm really excited about. Messaging settings, I think have really exploded recently because again, COVID, but it would allow your users to be able to get notifications right to their email or SMS. So if libraries are looking at maybe expanding to SMS or allowing their users to choose which notifications they get, this is what a user would see to be able to modify or add messages to their accounts. Um, I would, 
I would love an SMS message if a hold was available for me as a user, because then if I'm driving around in town, I can go right into the library without having to check my email. Or nowadays, I may want to get those email check-ins and check-outs if my library wasn't was still closed, and I wanted to make sure that those, those items were getting checked in or checked out. So again, you have the ability to pick and choose which notices that you want right to your email or SMS number. I'm gonna pop back over to lists and look at my gardening book again. Any list you can go ahead and send to yourself, you can email, you can print, which is fantastic. So if you wanted to print up a list of staff picks for your next book club, you could just go, this is what the staff are talking about at the library, here you go, let's discuss. A few key kind of social interactions that users could do on the OPAC that libraries can pick and choose what they want their users to be able to do. One of the first things are tagging. So your user could go ahead and kind of do a user-driven subject headings, which would allow your user to give new tags to books and allow others to see those tags. Both tags and comments, which is the next one I'm going to talk about, will need to be moderated by a librarian. So these are not instant um, words or comments that are shown instantly on your OPAC. They would be ones that you would need to moderate, but you can allow your users to put comments about this title. I always think of like those, um, sometimes those academics, like this book would be great in this class, or this was a great read along with X, Y, and Z. You also have the ability to star the books as well. If I start a book and I gave this a five-star rating, other users would say one user has given this a five-star rating. So if you're used to like a Goodreads and that kind of star world, how many users and how many stars, that's what you would be used to there. And then finally, your user can share what they find on the, the Koha OPAC using these share links. I could email this out. I could put this on my Facebook page and say, look what I found, put it through my LinkedIn account or go ahead and tweet that. So your users could go ahead and really blow up your library page and saying, hey, look what my library um, is has or is doing. Really fantastic way to, to sh showcase that. This would be going through their own Facebook or Twitter feed, not yours. Okay, before we're gonna have a few questions in a minute, I'm sure, because I can see a few questions, but I wanted to pop over and just see a couple other OPACs because you may say, that's not really for me that look and feel. I don't know if my user would like that. Maybe I want to be able to do a little bit something different for my users or place things in different places. So I'm going to pop over to, um, this is actually has changed a little bit since I remember they went live, but this is an academic college in Texas. I love what they've done with their um, cover flow. So it's a little bit different than the one we have. They have two different options here. They're using the left-hand side as quick links so they can go right over to their library policy, to databases, to research guides. They can reserve a study room right from the website. So this could gives me the look and feel of why would I ever need to go anywhere else as this user of this library. They've utilized the search, the under the search bar area to link out to other areas such as course reserves, purchase suggestions, ILL and library website. So pretty fantastic. Um, a public library that I really like, um, and I'll head over to their main page in a sec, but they have integrated both their OverDrive and their Hoopla. So I wanted to show you that that is again a possibility. They've really jazzed up what patrons are seeing. So again, customization is not just seeing OverDrive as words, they're actually using a logo, which is 100% fantastic. Pop over to their main page. Again, they're using that nice cover flow, but they're not using the left-hand side of the page. They're really utilizing this main area as like, this is what we have in the library. This is fantastic. And then their e-collections down here at the bottom. Also here, forgot your password, register here online. If, people, if, if libraries don't have this option or wanna be able to do this, you can allow users to register online 
through your COHA OPAC. Another public library um, in New Hampshire, they're doing it a little bit different. They have just a few links on the left. They have a lot of information at the bottom. So just a different look and feel of how customizable this OPAC um, look is. Dual cover flows, how fantastic is this? This is a lot going on in my head, but this is really fantastic. I love it. And they also have some options to choose. Like I wanna look at new items such as in fiction or nonfiction or the, the movie section. I have two more. Hopefully I'm not boring you all. This is a specialized library. So this is an art museum. If you've never been to this art museum, please, please go. It's fantastic. They've really sleeked the design. So they do have books and physical items that they want you to um, search, but they've really trimmed up what they're showing on this Koha main page, which, you know, you got to give them credit. It's pretty. And then finally, another specialized library, Do Space in Nebraska. They're giving a lot of information about their, um, their library right on the main page. So they're not doing the library kind of material at Do Space, but they do um, kind of maker spaces and, and things like that. So that's what they're gearing their users to. So it's a really fantastic way to get some information out to the users. I meant to get like just a plain Koha vanilla page. You could actually see a very plain Koha vanilla page if you've ever seen your our demo site, which just white and a search bar and a login box. So you can see we've been able to have some fantastic choices, ways to really get your patron into your OPAC and find out events going on or all the resources that libraries provide out there. It's a fantastic, fantastic opportunity to really highlight what's going on in your library and what you are there to provide in addition to the books and the e-electronic resources that you have. So thank you. Jesse, do we have any questions? We had a few that came in through the Q&A. Um, one was asking about adding an option tool to the OPAC. And um, I shared a blog post that was written about um, connecting citations and integrations into the Koha OPAC. Um, and then um, we had another one about um, suggestions for accessibility enhancements, which um, I've shared with Lucas um, to put together maybe a, a quick blog post to talk a little bit about how you can tie accessibility uh, directly into Koha. Um, and we can share that as well. That's perfect. And if you are interested in other OPACs, I'll pop this, um, this link into the chat box. This will actually show you all of the Bywater Partners OPACs um, and each one of the links will bring you to their OPACs. So you can kind of see what everyone else is doing when you're thinking about doing your own OPAC. Um, can you repeat about this? I citation tool, please. Did you put that in the chat, Jesse? Yep, I'll copy. Well, it went in the Q&A, but I'm, I'll copy and paste that over to the chat as well. Okay, perfect. Perfect. You can stop sharing. I want to thank everybody to for coming. This has been fantastic. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, at sales at bywatersolutions.com. We are happy to help and answer any questions. Visit our website for lots of education, um, questions and answers, tutorial videos, and blog posts that highlight a lot of the ways that you can do this for your own COHA or future, hopefully future COHA partners will do. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thanks so much. And we'll send out this recording to y'all. Thank you. Thank you.